Welcome to The American Rancher. I'm Pam Minnick. This week, our show features Bronby, and we're going to see these cattle at work in commercial settings across the country. Bronby are a remarkably versatile and hardy breed with proven ability to deliver both maternal and carcass traits. On today's program, we're going to focus on the bull power asset that has always marked these exceptional cattle. Ron V. Bulls impact commercial programs in a number of positive ways. They have a track record of feeding efficiently while both grading and yielding well at finish. Stockmen that know these cattle through the beef production cycle will visit with us and tell us their thoughts on this breed. A little later, we'll visit the Genetic Development Center outside Navasota, Texas, where a group of breeders have concluded a detailed performance test on a set of yearling bulls. We've got a good show for you. We're glad you joined us. Stay tuned. We'll be back with our Bronby story. Welcome back to the American Rancher. Bronby cattle have been recognized for a number of positive traits, including docility, efficiency, and longevity. In herds across the country, they are also proven to bring both maternal quality and carcass punch in the same package. On today's show, our focus will be on the power of the Braun V Bull and what he delivers to commercial ranchers from the pasture to the feed yard and onto the rail. Introducing performance tested Braun V Bulls to your commercial cow herd takes a lot of the guesswork out of your bull buying decisions. The history of added value brought by using Bronby Bulls just makes the decision to buy Bronby Bulls that much easier. North of Frederick, Oklahoma, Mitchell Farms has a commercial cow-calf operation consisting of Black Baldy and Red Angus cow herds with Bronby sired calves at side. Jerry and Brian Mitchell do like what Bronby has brought to their program. We've got our Red Angus cows and we've also got Black Baldy cows. And we've been uh, using Braun V bulls on them for the last five to six years. And uh, we've used some uh, homozygous uh, Black Braun V bulls on our Black Ballface cows this year. We put our bulls in at a time where that we start calving around the 1st of February. And, and we start pulling our bulls when uh, 60 to 70 days. Seem like our birth weights will run around on average around 80 pounds. Our calves are really big bone type calves, feed efficiency, and they really convert well. Uh, we really like them. When they're born, they look like a little jackrabbit. Uh, maybe not too impressive, but they quickly grow out of it. And then you start to see the muscle formation. Once we get those calves into our feeding pens, really have to watch them. Before you know it, you're, you're feeding over 3% of their body weight in feed, and uh, of course they, they do outperform our other calves that we, uh, uh, we have grown here and uh, the calves we've, uh, we've bought. Time and again, Braun V Influence, introduced to English and English cross cow herds, have brought lasting value. The feeder calves perform quite well in the yard, and the retained heifers are documented to have exceptional longevity and production. Pretty docile, and they transfer that to their calves too. Their, their cattle, is, uh, their calves are, are uh, easy going, easy handling. Those bulls almost act like sometimes they're a little lazy, but they, they do their job. Superior rep that we use, uh, he found those bulls for us in Nebraska. What I like about the Bromby cattle, it's just their attitude and, and their conversion rate and the, the way they handle. What really got me was when you, you, know, you went to get them off of the cattle when it's time to pull them, there was no problem, there was no fight and any big deal, you just pull them. And when, when you turn them back, when it's time to put them back on the, on the cows, the, uh, they would, went right to work. I mean, you know, there wasn't any walking around, you know, bowed up, anything. I mean, they just started doing what they were supposed to do. Mitchell Farms markets their calves over superior livestock through Bud Willis. The cattle work well and are readily received come auction time. They're easy to market. And I'll call those feed yard guys and a lot of times prior to the sale, you know, let them know that they're only going to be on that particular sale. I've had uh, one buyer that bought them uh, three years in a row, every one of them. 
In fact, one year I had uh, 10 loads of them on Denver and the man took all 10 loads. They're docile and they're carcass cattle. And, you know, that's, that's the easiest way to explain them. They're gonna sell. They was from 10 to, to 11 months of age and they was weighing 887 on the steers and the heifers weighed 790. They've worked real well for us. Uh, come auction time, they sell just as well as, as our black cattle do. Braun V are a moderate framed, highly adaptable breed, known for possessing and defying the antagonistic traits of marbling and muscle, and also maternal and carcass. They are also at the forefront of recognized feed efficient breeds. They transfer that feeding efficiency and that's, that's dollars in our pocket. And so that's, that's probably the, uh, that growth and that bone, that's the number one thing that, that we, we, uh, we like out of these Bronco cattle. Uh, if you're not having to go out every three years and buy another bull or four years, and you still have a very sound bull that's lasting five, six, seven years, you're saving money. The Bromby bulls are producing a very feed efficient, docile type of calf, and that's going to uh, grade very well. Randy Olson is a commercial rancher from southeast Kansas. Randy asserts that the Bronvi Angus cross female is this generation's equivalent of the black baldy cow. The cattle have made us money and, and, and have done really well for us. And that's the thing that with the Bronvi cattle that have impressed me is the carcass traits. But we've got the maternal traits there, the good mothers, the breed back, the tremendous udders, the teats on cows, you know, heifers, you give them out that are, are little and they're just a phenomenal mama. I'm running the Bronby Angus Cross is what I'm really shooting for. And I tell them, a lot of the guys I know and, and ask me about them, I said to me, they're the modern black baldy cow. Because you get the tremendous the hybrid vigor in the cross, you get the breed back, the good mothers, the tremendous udder and stuff, but you don't get into the eye problems and the udder problems that you run into some of the other deals. The Olson operation has seen their Bronby influenced calves work at all stages from weaning to feed yard performance. On the bull side, the cattle bring siring ability to put forth calves with remarkable carcass and maternal traits. They're real good cattle. I, uh, you know, We've messed with several different breeds down through the years, and that's the probably the one of the big things that I just sure want to make sure we keep in our cow herd is the Braun V influence. Fred Schroeder of Shelton, Nebraska, has fed Braun V for some 10 years. He has grown to like the ability of Braun V cattle to achieve choice quality grade without losing yield grade. The uh, marketing window on the Braun V breed, of course, is uh, quite a bit wider since their yield grade does remain low, their back fat measures less, and it really gives you more flexibility in finding that optimal marketing date. Fred notes that Bronvi cattle on feed always do well and grade well. They provide market value consistently with high carcass value. Many who feed them realize the profits of owning them through the yard. The Bronvi cattle we will own all the way from their calf weights, 500 to 600 pounds. We need cattle that are going to achieve some frame and at the same time not become too fat. Having the cattle grid well at the end of that period is foremost. So they need to be efficient all the way through and we've found the Bronvay to be able to do that. The buyers do recognize the quality of the cattle. They fit what they need in the plant. Bronvi and Bronvi cross cattle can be harvested at an efficient endpoint and reach an acceptable quality grade before carcasses get too big. This eliminates those later costly days on feed. The Bronvi cattle typically will achieve a higher quality grade while maintaining a lower yield grade. Both of those things give us premium. When you're selling on the grid, you need to have both of those things working in your favor to be able to get the value of that critter as high as possible. And the Bronvay breed does that for us. 
Many producers buy Bronvi bulls with retained ownership in mind to capitalize on Bronvi added feed efficiency and harvest value. From my perspective as a feedlot operator, I would like to be able to find more Bronvi cattle. A lot of those producers know the value of their cattle and so therefore uh, they take them to finish. If they don't have a feedlot, they may find one. So there's less supply available for those of us who have to buy calves. Ron V. Breeders know they have bulls that bring the power that commercial cattlemen need today from the pasture to the yard and on to harvest. The cattle marble without increasing external fat. They are efficient and are sought by feed yards who know their capabilities. So continue to feed Bronde cattle because they've always given us a good opportunity for high quality grading cattle. Cattle that will return a premium when sold on the grid. And that's the name of the game. At all points in the beef production cycle, Bronby have established themselves as performers, which makes room for them once cattlemen get to know them. In fact, one breeder noted that repeat customers are at times easier to come by than the new ones. He's not discouraged at all and simply welcomes new people to meet cattlemen who know these cattle. When we come back, we'll see the Bronby Bulls on test in Texas. This is the American Rancher. Don't go away. Welcome back to the American Rancher. Braun V. Bulls are making a name for themselves in American ranching as an efficient breed through residual feed intake testing. Over the past few years, Braun V. Breeders from multiple states have sent groups of young bulls to the Genetic Development Center in Navasota, Texas to test, measure, document, and identify some of the best calves in the breed. Here's more on our story. Dustin Dean serves as program director of the Cattle Testing and Breeding Complex, which includes the global reproductive services entity, Sexing Technologies. The Genetic Development Center recently wrapped up testing on a group of some 26 yearling Brom V. Bulls from a number of breeders. I tell you, the number one thing that comes to mind when, when I think of a Brom V. Bull today, when I think of these Brom V. Bulls that are, that are behind me now is one word and that's power get them out, getting them walking in the pen. You can see the muscling and the power in those bulls, but it's in a compact package. The breed has done a good job of moderating the size of these bulls to when they're mature, they're not gonna be too big for your cattle, but they do bring power to the equation. So if I'm sitting down with a commercial cattleman that's thinking about using Bromby bulls, they can get a Bromby bull of pretty much a traditional color. They can get a homozygous black bull that will always throw black calves. They can get a bull that will throw a moderate birth weight when that calf hits the ground, it's gonna grow very, very fast and ultimately end up looking like the cattle that are behind me right now. So they bring power to the equation, which I think is a detriment um, to some of the other breeds that haven't been able to, to really focus on that like they should, but these cattle have. Ryan Dorner serves as facility manager of the Genetic Development Center and notes that the Bronby cattle are stout and yet quite gentle. Well, they're here for roughly four months. It's 133 days. Uh, we have our first three weeks of uh, diet adaptation and warm-up period. And then 70 days after that, it's our grow safe portion of the test. Then those 70 days, we weigh bulls every two weeks, and that's the time period where we're recording uh, our individual feed intake. We carcass ultrasound every bull that comes through. We also fertility test every bull that comes through the facility. We do a BSE, a complete BSE. And then also, upon request, we do a bunch of, we take blood and do a bunch of DNA sampling, and we'll send that off. We've had Bromies all four tests. I think Luke and I would both say that they're, they're easy to work. These set of bulls probably averaged um, around 1,300 pounds coming off. We're always around them. They're very gentle cattle. I think if people are able to look past hide color and coat color. They'll find the Bromvies uh, are really, they really excel in most categories. The cattle industry is constantly pushing to develop a more efficient animal. Yeah, Bromvie cattle have a place in the cow business for sure. 
The Genetic Development Center is one of the nation's finest custom bull and heifer development facilities for the profit-minded producer. The center comes fully equipped with individual animal intake measurement equipment from GrowSafe Systems and is the most advanced cattle feed efficiency testing facility in the world. We're standing here at the Genetic Development Center, which is actually one of the many profit centers of the parent company, which is called Sexing Technologies. Sexing Technologies is a, a global livestock reproductive company. We have offices in over 10 countries now, but the global headquarters here is in Brazos County, Texas. And at the facility is the global headquarters for the sex semen production. That's the core business of the company. We also have one of the largest um, ET and in vitro fertilization facilities in North America. When we were in the first stages of design on this facility, we perhaps built the whole thing around one idea and that was animal comfort. Pride and Joy, the facility, is really going to be the Temple Grand and custom designed sorting facility. We have our own feed meal, it's called More Feeds, so we're able to customize these rations uh, when they come to this facility. If you Google Sexing Technologies, our website will come up. It's just that, sexingtechnologies.com. Uh, the Genetic Development Center website is geneticdevelopmentcenter.com. Uh, Both of those give a lot of information about the facility, explanation and about the technology, how it actually happens, how to use it on a day-to-day -day basis at your purebred or your commercial operation. Ron V. Breeders have placed consecutive groups of young bulls on test at the Genetic Development Center for the past two to three years. Some of the bulls have sold straight from the facility after completing the test period. I just can't tell you the number of times I brought bulls down here with preconceived notions about this one's going to be great and that one may be so. There's just a lot of times when you'll miss if you pick on looks alone. The other thing that's important is it impacts your herd for so long because if you're not testing and you, you begin using a bull's genetics, it's at least two years before you have your, your first calf and, and it takes three or four years for that calf to get in production. So you can really go backwards a long way if you're not careful. I know that there's a lot of us that are, are doing everything we can to raise the best cattle we can. I'll say this, we've got a great piece of raw material. And you know, the Bronby breed is a great breed. I have a lot more difficult time getting that first time buyer, but the repeat customer is pretty easy to come by because these cattle do everything that you hear about and that we're saying they'll do. Proof's in the pudding. Bronby bulls bring power to commercial beef operations. They are hardy and robust breeders that are proven for efficiency, soundness, and docility. The Bronby Association of America invites you to find out what Bronby can do for you. Under the Membership Service tab at Bronby.org, you'll find breeders from all across America that are willing to help you get started. Put some Bronby bull power in your herd. You'll like it all the way through. We'd like to thank all of our guests for a great show. The Bronby Association of America is a quality group that's developing a very commercially and economically viable breed that's delivering both bull power and carcass punch in a stout package for today's rancher. For more information, log on to bronby.org. That's all the time we have here today. We invite you to visit our website, theamericanrancher.com, and check us out on Facebook as well. I'm Pam Minnick. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you down the road.